Hi there, this is Vicki Ronchetti with Show Dog Prep School. Welcome to this Breeder of Influence interview. Today I'm going to be talking to Sandra Pertari Hickson of Mountain Kings, Kings Mountain, Mountain Dandy Dinmont Terriers. Um, so I usually like to start these out with how we met. And basically how we <laughs> met is I'm sure I've been in your ring before um, showing dogs because you are an AKC judge. Um, and just from the dog show scene, that's where I've kind of seen you around mostly. And then, of course, we did a session together. We did. Your wonderful did. little Holly. With Holly <laughs> Berry, yes. <laughs> um, okay, so tell me, who is Kings Mountain? Is it you, just you? Is it you and anybody else? Is it your family? <laughs> no, it's not just me. So um, the start of Kings Mountain Dandies was Betty Ann Stenmark, who I'm sure most everybody's probably heard of. Um, and she is, she's been breeding dandies since 1975. And prior to that, I think she had Salu she, she had Salukis and, and St. Bernard's, but dandies for the longest. And okay. About 2000, maybe 1999, um, I, we started co-breeding the dandies together and I got my first dandy from her um, and it's been the two of us ever since. So um, so yeah, this was her kennel name to begin with. She was it already- It was her kennel name to begin okay. with. And then, okay. and then, you know, I joined, yes. Mm -hmm. So And I've so did you have another so breed before? I had a given I started oh, okay. in Nikita's. That was my original breed. Um, I love the breed very much. I just, I could not buy or breed a dog that didn't have a health problem. And it just, it, it just got to be too much. And I was having much more fun and much more success with the dandies. So. Wow. Yeah. So how are the dandies in terms of health? Actually, it's a really healthy, long lived breed for the most part. Um, in fact, we have no genetic testing available to us because the only thing that we um, are having issues with or is a little bit, you know, the glaucoma is an issue in the breed. I wouldn't say it's rampant in the breed, but it does crop up here and there. And there is no test for that. We're in the process of holding health clinics where we're doing eye tests and, and, and some mini blood to, um, to the Canine Health Foundation, uh, I'm mean, sorry, to OFA. And um, hopefully we will develop a test for that at some point. Um, and then lymphoma, which of course everybody has, and um, yeah. and uh, the odd Cushing's here and there. Uh, things will crop up, you know, in older dogs like they do in all breeds, but overall very long lived. Um, it's not unusual for them to live to be, you know, 13, 14, 15 years old. Um, wow. Yeah, yeah. So my oldest was probably 14 and a half. Mm -hmm. um, and then and then, you know, I I've lost one to Lamoma. Um and, and the rest have been pretty healthy, you know. Yeah, that's nice. It's good when there's yeah. not a million diseases that are there's you not know. a million <laughs> diseases. No, no. Like that's good. We, we don't do hip X rays or I mean we just don't have issues in that department. I mean you know, a lot of dandies are probably dysplastic, but that's because they're built a little bit differently. I've never met a dandy that couldn't walk until it was 14 or 15 years old. Mm -hmm. so, you know, yeah. and, and a, a, a few back issues here and there will crop up, but not, I, I have to say, they don't really go down like dachshunds will all of a sudden just go down. Sometimes yeah. I've heard of that, right? Yeah. It doesn't really happen with them. I mean, it does, it, it can happen. I've heard of it happening, but with no, not with a lot of regularity. And I always tell dachshund people, like when they ask, oh my gosh, should I stay away from this breed? I've heard it about the backs. I always tell them that part of it is proper construction. Like if they have Correct. proper rib cage, proper Correct. keel, you're having a foundation that should support that long body. I'm assuming yep. that's similar with the dandies. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and, and good conditioning, you know, um, yeah. you know, yeah. muscle tone and exercise and, you know, all of that helps with, with keeping that back strong. Right. For sure. Um, did you grow up in a dog showing breeding family or is this something that you kind of like started on your own, like me. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, no, my parents did breed, but they were like, they were not show breeders. <laughs> yeah. No, not at all. Um, um, I'm, I'm first generation American. Both my parents are from Italy and, um, they think I'm crazy. No. Um, but, uh, no, I, I have always loved animals. I've always had a dog. Um, and it wasn't until I was an adult and out on my own 
Um, and I got my first Akita. I actually got my first Akita from a shelter. And then, and then I didn't get my first show dog, which was, you know, an Akita until I was 29. So no, mm -hmm. not at all. Yeah. yeah. Do you feel like, um, with the dandies, I don't hear about that as a breed that has, you know, a bunch of dogs in rescue or like a yeah. lot of breeder, you know, like, like you don't have like the real bad problem with shady breeders, like producing them just for money. Is it because it's hard to get them to begin with? Do you think? Um, I, they're just, they're, they're more popular than they were. We really have a hard time producing enough dogs to fill the need. Like we'll have people who want dandies and get tired of waiting and go get a border. Right. Um, but they're, oh. they're not, <laughs> yeah. um, so there are not a lot of dogs in rescue. The primarily the dogs in rescue are on occasion, they'll prop up at, 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 at in puppy mills and auctions mm -hmm. where people find they just really can't make that much money off of them so they put them in auctions um so we've had that not for a while but it has happened um mm -hmm. and then on occasion you know you'll have somebody pass away who has an older dog and um you know the breeders will always take their dogs back that's not an issue um but we have a lot of people who would like an older dog and they're just never available. Um, once people get their hand, they usually keep them. So Do they have small litters? It really has to happen. Do they have small litters? What's the average size for a litter? Um, I would say four to five is average. Um, you know, we've had four to five is average for us. Um, we've had six, seven. You know, we've also had singletons. Um I, I think four to five is pretty average. They don't have real, real small litters generally, like onesies, twosies. I mean, it happens, but yeah, um, I'd say four to five is normal. And can you tell me about the grooming requirements? Because that's <laughs> sure. one thing that always makes it like, uh, yeah, like, yeah, uh, yeah. Is it? A, is it? I mean, obviously they're wire coated, you know, correct. so they get hand stripped and all that, correct? Sure. So the body. Um, so dandies come in two colors, mustard and pepper, and the body is going to be mustard or pepper. And I just want one because they come in mustard. I just love I know. that. I know. <laughs> so that, that colored area, which is the body, the tail, and, and the ears, you know, not the tassel, but the ears, um, the throat area, those, that, those areas are all stripped. Um, oh, okay. The top. Yeah, the top knot, the underline, the legs, and the bib um, are all scissored. Um, oh, okay. So you're, you're doing a little bit of both. Uh, there is a learning curve. Um, it was, I mean, I came from Akitas to Dandies. Um, and I, I, I put in some effort to learn how to do this. You know, I... Uh, uh, somebody that we co-bred with and 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 know quite well um, lives in Australia. I went to Australia twice. Um, Bob LaRoche, famous terrier person, um, taught me how to strip. And for, at, fortunately for me at the time, he was living nearby. So um, I put a lot of effort into it. Once you learn how to do it, um, as long as you keep it up, it, it doesn't take me, once I have a good rolled coat, uh, rolled jacket on somebody, you know, that jacket probably takes me 20 to 30 minutes a week. Um, uh -huh. and the oh, that's not I too can, bad. No. And the scissoring I can blast through pretty quickly. And the thing about the scissoring is even if you don't get to it and you, you let it go, you can scissor it and you're not going to, nothing's going to, nothing's going to happen. When, right. With the roll jacket, if you, you especially if you have a show dog, you, you've got to you've got to maintain it. You've got to make that commitment. <laughs> yeah. You know, once a week or so. Um, you know, you can certainly strip down to the skin or close to it and then start over. But for me, it's better to keep them in a roll jacket. I just find it easier than starting over. Not that I haven't had to do it, but I just find it easier. I find it very later. comforting that you're allowed to do some scissoring. <laughs> Like, yeah, I like yeah. that, that, that would make me feel like, okay, at least I don't have to pull all of this out. No. Yeah. You're not pulling that. You're really not pulling that much real estate, to be honest with you. Yeah. You know, so, so, but it is, it is a learning curve. Um, and, and some people, some people learn how to do it really well, you know? Yeah. 
Um, do you handle your own dogs or do you typically use a handler? And how is the breed for somebody new just getting into dogs? It's primarily an owner handled breed. Um, some of our top specials are, are with handlers. Um, and we, we have put specials with handlers because I can't go to dog shows every week and nor do I want right. to. Um, and so, but my class dogs, or if I'm just, you know, specialing a dog here or there or the national or the regional, I will handle my own dogs. I love being in the ring, showing my own dogs more than I love anything else in dogs. You know, I like to say, this is what I bred. I think it's beautiful. And when I go in there, I, 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 think it's a really good dog that I'm presenting. I have groomed it to the best of my ability. I've trained it to the best of my ability. And so I like being in there, you know? Yeah. 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 So it's it fun. sounds like it's pretty, it's pretty new person friendly. It is very. If very. you can find one, right? Right. And we're, we're really working on that. Um, we, we need more people. Our breed needs more friends and we need more people in our breed and we need more young people in our breed. Um, and it's actually very encouraging that we have, um, you know, several younger people in the breed for the longest time. I used to tell people, you know, I'm the youngest person in the dandy club and I'm like 50 <laughs> years old. You know, that's not good. Um, so we, we are bringing in some, some younger people and they're interested in the breed. Um, and I think, I think they're interested because, you know, over the last, you know, 10, 15 years or so, we've had some really good dandies out there presented really well, showing really well. Um, and people have figured out that they can do something with one. So yeah. I do think that there is like having Lao Chen, right. my, sec my second right. breed, that it, 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 there, it is important, you know, that like we let people know if they have even a, a, a mild interest in a breed like this, that it's like, we need help. Like this breed is in trouble potentially and needs right. people to right. be interested in them and that kind of thing. Right. And I would love I would love nothing more than, you know, someone young and local, you know, that I could take under my wing and, 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 you know, show them how to do this if, if there was some interest, um, you know, and we, we've had some interest, but I haven't had anybody around here. So, yeah, you know, it's been in other places. So, and that's hard. It makes it a little challenging. So yeah. tell me a little bit more about the dandies, and what got you interested in them? <laughs> so, um, it, it, it was not intentional by any stretch. So um, Betty Ann and I became friends and um, she used to live, you know, 20 minutes up the hill from me and on Kings Mountain, hence that's where Kings Mountain uh -huh. came from. And, um, and I, I started, um, you know, we started going to dinner at each other's houses and I still had the Akitas at the time. And uh, she had a little mustard bitch mousetrap and uh, King's Mountain Mousetrap, and that was her name, <laughs> Mousetrap. And uh, so she and, trapped and you into the breed. <laughs> she did. She did. And so she gave me the Mousetrap, and um, and and the rest is history, as they say. And and so that was my. I, she was. She. I, I wouldn't call her a foundation bitch because she certainly wasn't a foundation bitch for Kings Mountain. I mean, there were several. There, there was decades of Kings Mountain already behind her, but for me, she was. And, uh, yeah. you know, I, I, so I bred her to the great Harry, um, you know, Hobart Gay's Phineas Fogg that, that Bill took to number one. Mm -hmm. And I actually bred to Harry when Harry was still in Australia. So, um, oh, wow. Yeah. And so my first trip to Australia, I had four week old puppies from him here. And then I took them up to Betty Ann's while I was gone. And I saw him in person for the first time. And um, I, I watched him and I watched him and I watched him. And finally, Emma says, aren't you going to say anything? And I said, well, <laughs> you know, when I like something, I'm kind of quiet. And I said, I think I might have something really good in there. <laughs> and, uh, and in there was my first Best in Show winner, my first national specialty winner, and one of our top producing bitches of all time. So, you know, yeah. We, was that all really the same good. dog? That was all the same dog or those were multiple litter. dogs? Oh, there, were, and no, there no, was like there were three different dogs. Yeah, wow, there were three different dogs. Yeah, so I yeah, would call that great. successful. <laughs> Very successful. So the three out of the six, you know, went on to do pretty great things. And then you were hooked. You were just like, and then I, I was hooked. It. And then I just I really enjoyed showing them. They're they're really fun to show because they're very animated and 
Well, as you know, right? I mean, the wagging of the tail is like really uh -huh. important. And I teach everything to free stack. I, I loathe getting on the ground. So, you know, they're really fun to show, very animated and, and very funny. And, um, you know, it's just a great little breed. I would imagine that they do well in other dog sports. How are they as far as biddability? I mean, I know they're terriers, but... <laughs> It depends. So mm -hmm. um, when I retired, which was right before COVID, so I couldn't do anything for a while. But um, I have I have two two bitches that I'm showing in sports. One is extremely biddable. Like she's really good at scent work. She's really good at um, barn hunt. She's she's good at at she likes to use her mind. The other one, on the other hand, likes to use her body and could care less if I was really even there. I mean, she loves me, but she loves past cat because it's all about mm -hmm. that lure. I don't do anything. I just stand at the other end so I can catch yeah. it. Um, she's great at it. Anything that she can use her body, she's a solid muscle from the tip of her nose to the end of her tail. And um, so they're really good at that. And and I'm also doing NASDA with them, which is really uh -huh. fun. Um, and Earth Dog, which we're just starting in, Barn Hunt. Um, the one who loves the fast cat i'm gonna see if i can get her to fly ball because everybody wants a short dog and fly ball <laughs> and, uh, yeah yeah and, uh, what about dog so, diving do they like water or would, you know could she... i i some really do i mean they were bred to hunt otters as well so i have oh um, you know one of our one of our who breeds the dandies with us bj pumphrey and she lives in canada and because she's you know by the water and she goes to cannon beach all the time her dogs love the water um, mm -hmm. you know, mine, not so much. I, I don't know. I, I don't know. Maybe, uh, maybe there are some out there that do it, but mine probably wouldn't like it yeah. too much. <laughs> I couldn't even get them to go into the swimming pool. So, <laughs> but they Tell don't have your... water, you know, much. Yeah. Hers, they just haven't really been exposed to it. Yeah. Yeah. Hers, hers swim like fish. Well, not only that, if she has adults and her, everybody there swims and they right. just kind of, like I have a right. friend like that with Lao Chen. I mean, everybody all of these dogs jump in the pool a thousand times. And then if you live there, you, suddenly you're just doing it too, you know? It's right. what they do. <laughs> right. Tell and, me about and, your foundation animals. Um, what well, was that well, one girl, right? Well, right. So again, um, I hesitate to say foundation because there was a lot of Kings Mountain before I came in, but certainly there right. was the mousetrap and then mousetrap's son, um, was Stuart Little, and and he was, oh my God. you know, my first so national. <laughs> I know, right? He was so good. Everyone, we've gone through all the mice, <laughs> mice names, right? I'm sure and you have. Daughter, that is real good, <laughs> right? His daughter is Angelina Ballerina. <laughs> See, and uh, so she is the top winning bitch in this country of all time. Um, they were very influential. We've had Robert the Bruce, very influential. Um, he he was bred to um, Angelina Ballerina, and I got Darcy, their daughter, Prima Ballerina, who's the top winning specialty bitch of all time. She won four nationals in a row and, I don't know, probably six or eight regionals. So um, those dogs were all very influential. And then we've had just some really good brood bitches. We've had Oops, Oops a Daisy um, and... Um, the truffles was really good. Um, we've, we've just primarily, I would say our strength is in our bitches and that they produce really well. We've had some really good stud dogs as well. Um, but our strength is really in our bitches and not all of our best producing bitches have, you know, done great things in the show ring. Um, mm -hmm. you know, a lot of them have just produced really well for us for whatever reason, they don't like it or, um, they're just more peasant type bitches, you know? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I think that that's interesting though. And I think that that's such an important thing to sort of, you know, talk about because like I'm sort of restarting cause I had standard dachshunds for a long time and now I have miniatures. So I'm right. starting to bring those and I, and I've like, you know, my male, you know, I produced a nice male, my male just produced a nice male, but I'm sort of like, I'm not going to allow myself to do that until I real, really feel like I have a good handle on girls. Cause I, that's kind of how I was raised to breed. Like you build, you build a, a not a foundation, meaning the first one, but like, a, right. 
a solid foundation of your girls before <laughs> you sort of, is that what you feel too? Um, we certainly have done that. The, the, the challenge in our breed is finding a good male to breed those nice bitches to that isn't completely related to your own stuff. Um, and we have, we have certainly, we've gone out of the country to do that. Um, Australia, Finland, um, and, and, you know, some other places. Um, but that, that is challenging. It's very challenging. Um, but we do feel like we have done that. Um, you know, as I said, you know, the groundwork and our foundation and our strength is really in our bitches for the most part. Yeah. And I do think that's, again, you know, with the, with these low number breeds, it's like, Mm -hmm. even if you think you have something that's not very related, like right back like another generation or two back, it is all related, yep. right? So yep. that does make it challenging because in dachshunds, and in fact, my next question is going to be if you have a formula for your breeding. But when I did dachshunds, I was taught a very specific line breed, line breed, go out, come in, line breed. Mm-hmm. And it's like mm-hmm. with the loud chen, it was totally different. It's it's literally just like that. Well, you find a dog that's complimentary, but isn't really related. And that is hard to do because- yeah. You know, I mean, it's getting easier now that there's more dogs, but it is a real challenge. Yeah. And we don't really have a formula. We we try and, you know, pick the best dog for that bitch. We Mm -hmm. are we we consistently pretty consistently line breed. Um, And, you know, there's good and bad to that. The good is obviously, you know, you can spot a King's Mountain Dandy from a mile away. I mean, I've had people call me and tell me, you know, even out of the countries, I knew that was yours as soon as it walked into my ring. And that's a good thing. <laughs> right. Yeah. So, um, but the bad thing is that it, it is, you, you get close. And, and so, yeah. you know, at this point I, I would, I would have to say we're starting to get a little close. I'd like to find something. What I like to do sometimes is what I call, you know, like, half line breeding or half out crosses uh-huh. where you know you have a little bit of your stuff on one side um and then something completely different yet complementary and phenotype on the other side right finding that is not easy um you know and if if we can't get that then at least find something that's phenotypically um and and has been phenotypically like yours going back you know, for generations. So that, so that that's pretty line bred because, Mm -hmm. you know, you know how it is. I mean, if you take something, even if it's pretty close and you breed to something that's a complete mishmash, it's a crapshoot, you know, you end up with nothing. You can, I mean, we've had litters where, you know, they've been all pets. So yeah. Yeah. Or you end up with one good one. And, and cause I've known people that have done kind of just like always bred even in breeds like dachshunds where they could line breed where they're just like nope i just pick out pick out and it's like right yeah, but then you get a good one every four years you know right. because there's no right. consistency whatsoever it's just- exactly and i you know I, I i watch i watch people do that in dandies but it's it's more obvious in a breed like dachshunds um because i watch people do it in akitas and they would like never breed to the same thing twice and they like that dog so they bred to it and they like that dog so they bred to it but every once in a while yes they'd end up with a good one but mostly it was just random kind of mediocre stuff yeah (laughs) i think it's harder to find where the problem's coming from too like if you get some sort of big issue you can't be like this is where this came from right right uh i want to ask you a question that's not on my list of questions but i can't help it (laughs) How have you maintained this relationship that sounds like it's still so good and so solid with Betty Ann for all these years? Because so much, so many times, you know, those right. things fall apart and, they do. You, you know, you have maintained, like continued on with her kennel name. You guys obviously yeah. Yeah. have worked together. Like, is it just because you're a good fit? I think it's, we're a good fit. Um, for sure. Um, and you know, I call her my dog mom. She calls her her daughter. I mean, we've, you know, it's been almost 25, maybe longer years. Um, and I think, I think for one thing, we see dogs the same way, you know, and, and that is very helpful. We don't disagree on too much. And if, 
if we um, have a difference of opinion about who we should breed somebody to, or we talk it out and then, you know, we figure it out, but we're never really mm -hmm. off. And um, so we do see dogs the same way. I, and this was a long time ago, very early on in our relationship, I went to Germany with her. She was judging a sighthound specialty and I watched her judge like a few, couple of breeds and then a few, and I mean, I was picking out who she was going to put up before she even pointed to it because mm -hmm. I, you know, we just see dogs the same way. And the, the other thing is that I think we respect what both of us bring to the table, you know, um, obviously her uh, time and life and dogs is, is much longer than mine. Um, I'm really grateful for everything that she's done for me and bringing me in and, 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 and helping me and, and certainly making me a better judge and, you know, everything down from ring patterns to you know, yeah. <laughs> never change anything, do it the same way every time. Um, and, um, and of course, you know, the breeding aspect of it and, and everything that she brought to it. Um, and I think she appreciates what I bring. You know, I, I do all the grooming and I primarily show the dog. She will tell you she's not really a groomer or handler, um, but she's uh -huh. a really good breeder. So, you know, so I think we respect what the other person brings to the table. So, yes, it's it it's been a long relationship and it's still the same relationship it's always been. Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah. yeah. Who were who were some of your favorite dogs? You mentioned a few, but like the favorites that carry the Kings Mountain kennel name. Um, you know, Angelina Ballerino is one of my favorites for sure. Um, she we used to say about her, she never met a dog show she didn't like. Um, <laughs> and 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 she was she would have been a great sport dog. Um, I, uh, you know, she didn't go out and get campaigned until she was, um, seven and a half years old, almost eight. Mm -hmm. Um, so wow. you know, for, I know, I know. And she'd already had two litters of puppies and nobody could believe it. They're like, she's eight years old. I'm like, she's eight years old. Um, and is it so just because came, that's when she looked great and you were like, we're doing this? Like, you know, it, she, she continued to look great. I specialed her myself a little bit. Um, here and was very successful, to be honest with you. Um, that was when Eddie Boys was showing Adam. So, of course, he always went first. <laughs> and so, you know, I, I got one of the other placements. But I was very successful with her on my own. But, you know, we had the opportunity for her to go with Carlos Puig. And it was just the opportunity. If the opportunity hadn't presented itself, we wouldn't have done it. Because yeah. I'm really picky about where my dogs go. You know, I, don't, I good, wouldn't send good. them with yeah. just anyone. Um, you know, like um, Angie's daughter, Darcy, went with um, Tyler Mills again, you know, and he laughs because he wanted a dandy. And we met at our national in 2018. And and um, I looked at how he took care of the dogs and he bought them all new beds and he bought them all bones. And then the X-Pens all had toys in them. And I'm like, OK, you can have a dog because, yeah. <laughs> you, you know, I mean, yeah, you know, and he laughs. He goes. I got a dog because I bought my dog some bones. And I said, yeah, I actually <laughs> did. Um, yeah. So, yeah. So, um, so Angie and Darcy, for sure. Again, Robert the Bruce um, never really had a specials career. Won the national once, though. Um, really a great dog and a very influential sire for us. Very influential. Um, Oops-a-Daisy, um, who actually lives with BJ, um, she was just shown our national 11 years of age and went opposite one day and selected. Oh, one day. nice. So, yeah, just, you know, just great. Everybody fell in love with her because she, she still moves like a million bucks. Um, Neville Longbottom, another very influential sire for us. Um, and he's Holly Berry's sire. Um, so, you know, and, and Stuart Little was also, um, he didn't produce a lot for us, but, you know, what he did give us was, was very good. Um, those are some of my favorites. And then we have some nice youngsters coming up, which I think are, are really, um, pretty promising really. So, yeah. How do they do like just living in a home, like as far as getting Great. along with each other or do they tend Great. to, yeah, I, no. I mean, they seem like goofy and kind of, you know, like, like I, it reminds me of one time I went to this big Basset Hound event. It was like, it was like a big spring fling thing put on by the Basset Rescue. And there was like, it was at someone's home, so it was all enclosed. And there was like 30 <laughs> basset hounds, like yeah. intact males, intact females, spade, near everybody. If someone started humping someone, they would just like roll down the hill and forget about it. I mean, <laughs> yeah. 
nobody ever got upset and it, it was really cool you know i know um, they're not quite like that so <laughs> they are they are goofy um, and they are fun, but they are still terriers. So right. um, while all my dogs are house dogs and when I'm home, they're all together. So I have I have six dandies, five bitches and a dog, and then a little rescue tripod little terrier thing. Mm -hmm. And um, and they all get along really well for the most part. When I am not home, they all go, I have four by six pens. Um, so I have a brother and a sister that are together and then four other bitches that are together. My old girl and the little rescue are together loose in the house. Um, yeah. I would never leave them. I would never leave a bunch of dandy bitches alone together in a house. That is just trouble waiting to happen. Um, and, but mostly they get along. Every once in a while, we'll have a, we'll have a little, spat or you know a bitch an melee over there. <laughs> yeah an argument over something yeah. you know I have one who's the fun police you know so she's always got to get in there and break everything up and make everybody stop having fun um I you know I <laughs> Whenever you come back from somewhere, they all have to swear at each other for a little bit, you know, nothing, but right. they do, you know, and I, I'm like, what, what is that? You know, I, I saw this video of two Rottweilers, two intact male Rottweilers. One had stayed home. One was at shows for two weeks. The other one came back. And they're like, hi, my friend, and wagging tails. See, like, dandy bitches would be growling and carrying on, and they have to tell each other how important they are. And, you know, yeah. and then they settle down. But, you know, you, you got you to gotta be able to manage that. It's that reintroduction also, ritual, that yes. word. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. it was that. <laughs> you know? <laughs> so anyway, um, so, you, you know, you, but mostly they get along great. They do. The boys are, a in my experience, the boys are kind of softer, you know, they want to make you happy, whereas the girls are kind of more, you know, mm -hmm. I'll do what I feel like. <laughs> I love boy dogs. I have yeah. girl dogs. I love the girls too, but I'm upset. Like people, you know, when they're just like, I want a girl, I want a girl. If they don't have any other dogs, I'm like, why, why don't you want a boy? Like boys are everything, you know, yeah. I just, I just love a boy dog. I mean, I love all my dogs, but like, my yeah. boys are very mushy and just, you know. Yeah. So who are some of your favorite dogs outside of your kennel? Um, you mean dandy wise? Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, certainly, you know, a lot of the dogs that Josie Whittle, who actually bred Harry um, and Emma bred, you know, in, in Australia and New Zealand and stuff, you can't. If you have a kennel name, it's you and that's it. You can't like bring somebody else and then you need a whole new kennel name. So they okay. were kind of one in the same, but but they had two separate kennel names. Um, and they had a lot of really wonderful dogs. Um, and and here, um, and oh, and there, Hanna Tuomanescu in Finland bred a lot of really lovely dogs. Unfortunately, she's not breeding anymore, but very, very lovely dogs. Um, and there's there's some good young dogs coming up in England. Um, and, you know, here we've had, you know, quite, quite a few um, pretty significant dogs. Unfortunately, a lot of those dogs are deceased and the owners or the breeders of those dogs are also deceased. And we've lost a lot of really key breeders in our breed, which is, Oh, and yeah, we have, they haven't been replaced. So, you know, we really need to work on that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So hard. I mean, you just want to scream like these dogs are so good. Why don't you just have one? <laughs> I know, I know, I know. We're um, working on it. So last question, what do you love about this breed the most? And you could tell me anything and everything you want to <laughs> tell me about them. You know, I, I think I, I love that in the house, you know, they're not your typical terrier, right? They're known as the gentlemen of the terrier group and they're not your typical terrier. They're not bouncing off the walls like some, some breeds. Um, they get really excited when you come or, or anybody comes really, that's an event. Um, and then they <laughs> relax and chill out. Um, they're, they're happy to go on a two or three mile walk with you. But if you can't do it that day, it's all right. They're fine. They're just, nice. they'll just hang out. 
Um, I love that they're funny and they have a sense of humor. You better have a sense of humor if you're going to own this breed because they do. Um, and they will toy with you. <laughs> um, and, and they're also, they're very smart. Not always biddable, but very smart. Um, mm -hmm. So, you know, and, 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 and they love to do things. So I like, again, now that I'm retired, I'm starting to do sports with, with the dogs and I'm really enjoying it. It's really a lot I of fun. I love that. I love that you're doing yeah. that because it's, there's just so many, especially like, I mean, I just, a barn hunt's one of my favorite things. And I think the yeah. dogs just love it. If they have any nose at all, I mean, they really yeah. are like, this is cool. So I think it's so good that, you know, it's great it's to see that great. someone who's a judge and a big breeder doing that stuff. Yeah. And it's good. You know, people don't ever see them. And so, you know, everybody's always excited when I bring them to anything, NASDA or Barn Hunt or whatever, because they're like, oh my God, we never have dandies here. And, um, and, and so they're, they're real excited. And it's good that people can see that they can do these things, you know? Yeah. Um, and, um, you know, even, even like, with the fast cat, which is the thing Holly loves the most. Um, Cause she loves to chase that, that thing. And so my first fast cat trial, like I didn't even know I needed two leashes. So I show up, right. My friend was there with me. Somebody loaned us a second leash. And I went to the end and they were like, I said, hi, I'm like, it's my first time. What do I do? And they said, does she love you? And I'm like, well, yeah, she loves me. And they're like, well, jump up and down and scream and yell and call. And I'm like, Okay, so I did all that. And then they're like, oh, she wants the lure. You're golden. <laughs> I said, okay, great. Nice. So now I don't do anything. I just let her come. I just stand there, you know. So nice. it's good that people can see that they can do these things. Because for the longest time, you know, even, even show people thought they were just this poor, pathetic little breed and that they couldn't do anything and they can't do what they were bred to do. And I mean, my dog's do earth dog. They go through the tunnels just like everybody else. And, you know, so it's good. yeah, it's good that people see they can do, do all kinds of stuff. What's the average weight? Like, what, how much <laughs> do they weigh? Well, the standard says 18 to 24 pounds. Um, okay. So that's a manageable... Yeah, but an, an 18, you're never going to, you very rarely will find any, and they know, they make no differentiation between dogs and bitches. So you're never really going to, I, I have, I, we had one, she was probably 18 or 19 pounds, maybe 20, and we placed her, she was just very toyish, like even to the point where her eyes were a little bit too big and too prominent. Yeah. Um, you know, I would say your average bitch is going to be between 24 and 22 and 24 pounds. Um, your average dog is probably 25 to 28. I'll go mm -hmm. up to 30, but I don't like it. Anything past that is going to be too big and clunky. You know, okay. they have to be, yeah. they have to be Weasley. The standard says Weasley. So if you look at the dog and it's Weasley, then you're fine. And, you know, like people also don't understand that muscle weighs a lot more. Muscle and bone weigh a lot. Um, you see right. Holly. Holly's not a particularly big bitch. She's like a normal size bitch. She right. She's 28 pounds because she's all muscle. Wow. Yeah, yeah. I wouldn't have guessed that for sure. No, nobody does. Nobody does. They're so, like, yeah, she's like 24 pounds. I'm like, nope. <laughs> so, you know, so, it's not a good gauge. Yeah, you but know. there's no, there's no like DQ for size. No, there, we all, have no right? DQs at all. None. Okay. Yeah. So it sounds people want the breed, right? People want to get them. It's just, there's not enough breeders kind of, right. there's just not right. enough out there. Okay. Right. And, and, and I mean, we, we, there still aren't enough people who want them. You know, we, we need more people. Um, we need more pet homes. We have a lot of show people that want them. We need more pet homes is what we need. Um, but we also need more breeders and we need more dogs in the ring and out and about so people can see them and meet them. Because once yeah. they see them and meet them, they love them. Right. I think that's similar to the Lao Chin, too. And, yeah. you know, really just a few years ago, the breed was really in trouble. And, you know, people have really been Rally. just making yeah. sure everybody knows about this breed and anywhere yeah. we can showcase them and stuff. Because we it's like, too. same thing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And I mean, the thing is, like, the dandies are so charming. <laughs> you know what <laughs> we, I mean? <laughs> I, I, um, 
I showed I showed Darcy at, at Westminster and they had Meet the Breeds. I mean, this was, you know, when it was still at the Garden or, or at least at the Piers. Um, yeah. And she, her, I mean, her head and expression was just amazing. It was big and she loved it. We were mobbed. I mean, they're five deep. I mean, they couldn't wait to get a selfie with her, you know? I mean, yeah. so, you know, people really, once they do meet them, they like them. And as you said, we try and do all those outreach things. You know, we have a meet, yeah. meet committee and a, and a SAC committee, a strategic outreach kind of type thing. But I, I also like that you said, like, that, you know, you need pet homes because, mm -hmm. like, I, I personally don't place a lot of show dogs. I mean, if it's going to be a show dog, I just want to make sure really of the exact kind of home it's going to be, Absolutely. If it's, you know, going to be 100%. going there. But I mean, I tell people like, it's important for people to see, you know, like well-bred, beautiful dogs walking down the street with their people. Like that's just as important. Uh -huh. You know, you don't want them to just see Louchin and Dandies whenever they watch Westminster or the dog right, show on TV. Right. right? We no, want them to sure. be like, you know, and I, and I feel like, especially the dandies they're such a you know a conversation starter right because <laughs> yeah. they're so silly yeah how could you not I mean, be like drawn them, in <laughs> uh, we walk them all in the neighborhood and we walk so we have two so we walk four and then the two older ones and the little tripod we walk separate but i mean we stop traffic like literally people will stop their cars oh my yeah. god so yeah, yeah it's you, you need to get them out there because how would yeah. people know if they never meet one how do they know it's just this silly looking funny looking little weird looking dog exactly. you know <laughs> well i hope that this interview gets some people interested in the breed i hope so too breed, i appreciate you, know. you asking me i really do Thank you, sure. Megan. It was great. Thank you so much for being on here. Everybody, again, it's Kings Mountain Dandies. This is Sandra Patari Hickson. I'm so grateful that you did this. It was super fun. Thank you. And Anytime. I hope I see you at a dog show soon so oh, I could you schmooze will. your dogs. <laughs> you will. All right. Baby. Good to have you on. Thank you. Bye. Bye.